Welcome back to JM Lectures. This is the fourth question in the series and we're starting the third unit of grade 11 physics, kinematics. And kinematics, kinematics is all about motion, right? So here's the question. A car starts moving from rest and its motion on a straight line is shown in the figure below. What is the average velocity of the car within the first six seconds? So we're given this figure here. Give me a minute to redraw this figure so I can clearly explain this question. All right, so I just redrew the graph here and this is a velocity, right? Velocity is meter per second versus time graph. So I guess we're using seconds here. So this is a velocity versus time graph. And this shows the path or like the speed a car travels, which is the question that we have here. So if I were to explain this, I would say that my car starts at zero, right? It starts at zero meters per second. It's not moving at all at first. And then it speeds up, right? It speeds up to a speed of six meters per second in the first two seconds, right? So it's a varying speed and it speeds up to six meters per second in the first two seconds. Then from two to four or the next two seconds, it stays constant at this speed of six meters per second. And then from four to six speeds up again to a speed of 10 meters per second. And that's the path we have here, okay? The path of a moving car in the first six seconds. So this graph shows us much more than just the speed and the time. Two extra things that this graph can show us are the acceleration and the displacement. All right, so the slope of this graph, if you were to find the slope of this graph, you would actually find acceleration, right? And if you were to find the area underneath the graph, all right, the area underneath the graph means this area here, if I were to close this off, finding this area, okay, this area right here would be the displacement, okay? So the area of the graph gives us the displacement, which I'll represent with an S like so, okay? So our focus is actually gonna be with the displacement. The slope, you might have to use in another question, but for now, we're gonna be focusing on displacement, okay? So displacement is equal to speed times time, right? Displacement is equal to speed times time, or in the sense, velocity times time, right? So that's why it's area, because think, the area of something is usually the base times the height, right? Or half base times height, depending on what the shape is. But the area is the product of two things, and that's what this is in this case. The velocity and the time will give us the area underneath the graph. So why is this important when the question is actually asking us for the average velocity? Well, the average velocity, AV, is usually equal to the displacement final minus the displacement initial divided by the time final minus the time initial. But in this case, we can use the formula, the displacement total over the time total, right? If we find the displacement in this question, we're already given the time to be six seconds, right? We know the car's traveling for six seconds, but if we find the displacement, then we can find the average velocity. So how do we find the displacement? Well, we could use the formula velocity times time, but the problem is the velocity is changing. It's not a constant velocity throughout this motion. Therefore, we need to use a different tactic or this tactic right here, finding the area underneath the graph. So if you were to describe this shape, it is not a particular shape. You can't really find the area of this whole shape. Therefore, let's split the area into separate parts, okay? Let me split this area into three parts, three shapes that I know how to find. Let me split it into this shape right here, and this one over here, and then this final one over here. So these are shapes we recognize. We have two triangles and a rectangle here. So let's call this shape one, and this two, and this over here, three. And let's find the area of these separate shapes. And remember, finding the area means finding the displacement. And once we find the displacement, we can find the velocity, all right? So let us first find the area of shape one, the shape right here. So it's a triangle, meaning finding the area of a triangle is simply half base times height, right? We know this, this is math. So you go half, the base in this case would be the time travel. So the time travel we hear, it's from, we see it's from zero to two. So that would be two seconds multiplied by the height of the triangle. So this would be base times height. The height right here is six meters per second, or we can just write six. Or you see how it's two six is also the point right here, this final point right here. So that would be two times six divided by two, 12 divided by two, and we'll get six meters. I'm saying meters because this is the area, but this is also the displacement. So this is our first displacement that we've just found here. Let's do the others just like that. Finding the second area, we see it's a rectangle and the area of a rectangle is simply base times height, right? So in this case, the base is from two to six, okay? Don't be confused. It's not from zero to six, it's from two to six. 
Therefore, you can't take six as your time. You have to take six minus two as your time because this length is four, all right? This rectangle has a length of four. Therefore, the base will be four times the height and the height is still six. We can just follow this line and see the height is still six. So it'll be four times six, it'll be 24 meters, all right? And that means we've found our second displacement, all right? Just by finding the area of this rectangle here. And finally, we have area three. Area three is again a triangle, which means we still have to use the formula half base times height. And it's just a matter of finding the base times height afterwards. So this would be half. The base we see here is from this point to this point. And we see that would be from four to six, right? We see that this base of this triangle three is from four to six. Again, we don't take six, but we take six minus four because we just want this length right here and six minus four will give us a length of two. And we multiply this to the base times the height and the height would simply be this point right here. So this height we can see following these lines, it's from six to 10. 6 to 10, again, we don't take 10 because 10 is not our height, but it's in fact 10 minus 6, that's our height, meaning a height of 4, all right? So that would be 2 times 4 is 8. 8 divided by 2 is 4 meters. Again, it's meters because we're finding the displacement, all right? So we have found our three separate displacements, but we're not quite done yet. We still need to find our total displacement. But just like the name signifies, total displacement is as simple as adding the three displacements together. So total displacement is just displacement one, plus displacement two, plus displacement three, all right? And it's just plugging in numbers after this. The displacement is equal to, the, uh, the total displacement is equal to the first displacement, six meters, plus the second, 24 meters, plus the third, four meters. And that will give us a total of 34 meters, right? So we're not quite done yet. We're not actually looking for total displacement, but rather velocity average. And finding the average velocity just means plugging in these numbers that we have, right? So the average velocity would be equal to, the average velocity will be equal to the total displacement over the total time. And we just found the total displacement to be 34 meters, and we know the total time to be six seconds. Not only is it in the question, but it's also in this graph right here. So when we divide this, we get a value of 5.67 meters per second. It's actually 5.666, but I rounded it up to 5.67 meters per second, and that would be our final answer, our final average velocity. So if we look at the choices, we see that there it is. It's our second choice, choice B, 5.67 meters per second. So this question could have gone a lot of ways. It could have asked us to find the acceleration in the first two seconds, or maybe what was the total displacement from the fourth to the sixth second. But all you have to know is that this graph, although it just shows velocity and time, you can find a lot more stuff by literally reading between the lines, finding stuff like displacement and acceleration as well. And that's it. All right, so this is the fifth question in the series, and the question states as follows. A bullet is fired at an angle of 30 degrees above the horizontal. If air resistance is neglected, what should be the bullet's horizontal acceleration, AX, and vertical acceleration, AY, when it reaches its maximum height? So there's a lot of information in this question, but the main concept of the question is about projectile motion. So let's draw the projectile, or the projectile trajectory, of this bullet. We have an X direction and we have a Y direction. And the projectile simply shows that it starts here and it goes up, reaches a maximum height, and it comes back down. This is generally the, the diagram of how you represent projectile motion. And on top of that, we're also given that it is trajected at an angle of 30 degrees and it reaches some maximum height, H max. And we are asked to find the acceleration in the X and Y direction at this maximum height, h max. Let me try to straighten that out like this. Yeah, that's a little better. So what is this 30 degrees? This 30 degrees is actually talking about the initial velocity. So the initial velocity is shot at an angle of 30 degrees. So that's the initial velocity. So since we're talking about acceleration in the x and y direction, let's divide everything in the x and y direction, including the velocity. So we can divide this velocity in the x direction, like so, the x, and we can also divide it in the y direction, like so, 
vy. So we have our vx and vy. And let's analyze how vx and vy changes through time, okay? So let's see how vx and vy is at this point. Let's see how it is at the maximum point, and maybe a point over here, and something over here as well. First, let's check Vx. Now, a key information that we're given in this question, it says air resistance is neglected. What it means by air resistance is neglected is nothing is pushing the bullet back, okay? If the bullet is fired this way, there is no air trying to push it back. So it's free to move in the x direction. And what that means is that the velocity does not change. Vx stays the same throughout the entire motion. And I represent that by showing that the length of the arrow does not change throughout the entire process of the motion. So Vx, if it was four meters per second here, it would be four 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 here. It would not change as time goes by. You can't say the same for Vy, however, okay? Vy does change. If we have some value here of Vy, it becomes less right here. And in fact, at the maximum height, we have no velocity in the y direction. It's zero meters per second. And here it starts becoming, in fact, a downwards velocity, a negative velocity, okay? And here it's a little more, but still in the, sorry, it's still in the negative direction, okay? So what we can say, what we can say about velocity in the y direction is that it's constantly decreasing, okay? We had some positive value here and we ended up with a negative value at the end of our projectile, meaning that the velocity decreased as time went by. So why am I talking about velocity when the question is asking us about acceleration? Well, if you look at the formula for acceleration, acceleration is equal to the change in velocity over the change in time. So this is important because we need to know the change in velocity in order to understand the acceleration. And that would be true for both acceleration in the x direction as well as acceleration in the y direction, okay? So to help us analyze this a little better, I'm going to draw several graphs of the velocities and the accelerations in both the x and y directions. Let's start with the velocity in the x direction and the velocity in the y direction. And then we're gonna use these two graphs to find the acceleration in the x direction as well as the acceleration in the y direction. Because like I mentioned earlier, we first need to understand velocity in the two directions to understand the acceleration in the two directions. So let's start with velocity in the x direction. As we said earlier, the velocity in the x direction does not change. It stays constant. How I represent that is, let's take some positive value here. I said, I mentioned four meters per second earlier. This is just an example, right? Let's take it's four meters per second. This four meters per second does not change as time goes by, right? So the four meters per second stays at four meters per second as time changes. Actually, let me write that for all of them. It's a change in time for each, right? So anyway, this four meters per second, or let's just, for the sake, because four meters per second isn't given in the question, let's just ignore that for now and just say that this Vx does not change. It is constant through time. And that's what we showed right here, right? This Vx is what makes the projectile move in the x direction. And it's exactly the same. Again, we can't say the same for Vy. Vy does change through time. If we started with some positive V, right? It decreases constantly. It reaches zero at some point and it still keeps decreasing as time goes by. It's a constant decrease, yes, but it's still decreasing constantly. Vx, it stays constant, while Vy decreases constantly, right? It started with a positive value and you ended up with a negative value, okay? Now we can see how does this affect the acceleration in both directions. Well, if Vx is constant, okay? We can, we can conclude that acceleration will be zero, okay? Acceleration in the x direction will be zero as time goes by. How do we know that? Well, here we can see change in velocity over change in time will give you acceleration. But in terms of the x, there is no change in velocity or the change in velocity would be zero. If the change in velocity is zero, that automatically means the change in acceleration is zero. So in acceleration in the x direction is zero meters per second squared. So we found the first acceleration. What about acceleration in the y direction? Well, here, velocity isn't constant, right? Not like this graph. It's not constant, but it's constantly decreasing, right? All that means is that if the graph is constantly decreasing, that means that we first know if it's constantly decreasing, we know that the acceleration is constant. And if it's 
decreasing window's acceleration is negative. So how I would draw that is, is I would draw a constant line in the negative direction. Anyway, what is the amount? Well, luckily, it's a constant amount as well. It's a well-known number of gravity. The thing that makes the body accelerate in the y direction is gravity, the Earth's gravitational pull. And that gravity is a value, a well-known value of negative 10 meters per second squared. Okay, negative 10, negative 9.8, it depends on the question. Um, so anyway, that shows that the acceleration in the y direction, it's not zero like the x, right? In the x direction, it's zero because there's no change. In the y direction, it's some value. It's a negative value because it's decreasing and it's constant as time goes by. So if we look at the choices, we see that it is our second choice. Choice B says ax is zero and ay is 10 meters per second downwards. How does that correspond to this? Well, the downward is indicated by this negative sign. The negative indicates a downwards direction, and that's it.